to be doing comprehensive advising, what is, what is involved in that? Well, I can tell you that in, um, in my process of going through this, I established really by going through some very serious coaching, mentoring from Bill, I came to the uh, realization that there are about a hundred things that if a client can check off of their list on a regular basis, like on an annual basis, that the, that the client can consider themselves to be financially together and on track to accomplishing their goals. So Bill talked about having, you know, the client having the confidence that no matter what happens in the markets or the economy or the world, that, uh, you know, the client would have confidence that they're still going to accomplish their goals. Well, on the back end of that, you know, how do you actually pull that off? I came to the realization and I sat down and it took a long time to do, but I established 110 checkpoints. And I became convinced as a professional, not collaborating with amateurs, I sat down on my own and I said, look, if every client, if I could check this off, this checklist, uh, every year and say that all these things have been looked at, then this client is financially together, you know, stamp of approval. Now I will tell you that that sounds like a daunting list, 110 checkpoints, but in the end, you know, most of the list does not apply to, to every client. I mean, I'm sitting there flying through the list saying, yeah, it doesn't apply, it doesn't apply, it doesn't apply. But at least I looked at it. I thought about it. I connected that issue with that client. And whether it's applicable or not, it got looked at that year. But I can tell you another thing. Even the, even the weird little things on the checklist that I put together, uh, when it does apply, even if it's kind of a, a, an outlier, weird issue, when you connect on that issue and you bring it up to the client and you start digging in and you realize this really is an issue, the fact that it was on the list, you identified it, you're on it, you're proactive, and you've created, you've maybe diverted a disaster because it was on your list. The fact that you're going through this list uh, really is of high value to the, to the clients. room has a little bit different model, but let's just kind of walk through uh, the logic here. You know, you can create your own success. I'm living proof of that. Uh, I kind of got into my, uh, my journey in building up the business that I, that I own today uh, through really the, the toughest market that I had encountered in 20 years because, uh, but I was, we were already into that terrible market when I, uh, when I realized uh, that I had kind of set my course towards uh, changing my business during an obnoxious time. But now looking back on it, I can share with you that there are enough elements in your control that none of that really matters. So let's talk, talk about what your value is to clients. You know, hypothetically, if your client could achieve only one of these two things, which one do you think they would choose? So you've got kind of a fork in the road here. Let's say you were to propose to a client, uh, maybe the first proposal is we could help you attempt to beat the stock market. You know, that's my, let's say that were my value proposition. Would you think that would be more attractive to a client than say, uh, if you were to help a client achieve their dreams and goals, increase their lifelong financial independence and reduce their stress? Now, what do you think? Which do you think would add more value from a client perspective? Okay, I would go along with you. It's enhancing the quality of life. So you think about what is the value and what is the purpose of financial advice in the client's mind. Terry talked about there being an old world and a new world. So let's talk for a minute about the new world. It's not about the markets and it's not about performance. You know, when you think about what clients view as what we do, there is kind of mass confusion out there. How many of you have met someone you think might be a good potential client? They say, so what do you do? And you say whatever you say about what you do, and you get this reaction from them where they think, yeah, my, my, my person does all that. I'm good. I'm taken care of. 
you know, this whole idea of comprehensive financial advice, the idea of creating a solution in people's lives that really get them to the point where what Bill talked about is true, where they actually have the confidence that no matter what happens in the markets or in the economy or in the world, terrorism and all these things that face people in terms of the, the risk to their plan, that because you're in place, they have the confidence that they're going to be okay. They're going to accomplish their goals. I'll leave you with this thought. The secret is your calendar. You have 168 hours. How you spend those hours is going to determine your quality of life and your clients. So I'll ask you to uh, basically consider this issue. What do you think is uh, my greater accomplishment? Would you say that it is the fact that I've built my business up to over a million a year, better running business model, more saleable business? Or would you say it's better health and happiness and aligning my business with my values? I'll let you decide. Thank you.